About a million years ago, I was studying guitar with Ann Brown in Philadelphia. It was a country music guitar course called Wahoo, O-A-H-U. But it emanated from Hawaii. It wasn't really country and western, it was more Hawaiian, which also is a home of guitars. On Tuesday nights, we would have band practice that was all guitars, about 16 of us. One of them had a Gibson Les Paul, two, I can't remember, maybe three gold pickups on it, and he could play guitar boogie. Arthur Guitar Boogie Smith's Guitar Boogie. I was in awe of this guitar from the first moment I heard it. Plugged into an amplifier, the rest of us were acoustic guitars in the 14 guitar band, 14 piece guitar band that Ann Brown, our teacher, taught all of us. I wanted one for years before I got it. And my father, may he rest in peace, was a retail men's clothing executive for a prestigious company in Philadelphia. The idea of spending that kind of money on something that was going to lead to rack and ruin and certainly no good was out of the question. So cut back to the chase. They told me when I learned to play guitar boogie, they would purchase for me an electric guitar. They had no idea what it cost, and the three or four hundred dollars you'd had to spend in those days was way more than they felt they should be spending. It was probably like a whole month's worth of bills to them, and, and I semi understood. And it took me a while to get a hold of that electric guitar, a black Les Paul, white trim, gold pickups, the perfect guitar. It, it was it was a, a monumental moment in my life, and it, it just felt great. And later on, before you know it, I'm learning other people's songs and writing songs of my own. Jimmy's tunes and Beatles songs like everybody else in those days. And uh, the Gibson Les Paul had always been a an iconic instrument to me among all the guitars that were available. I, I would play it through any amplifier I could find. It's very spiritual moment, you know. You know you're, you're in the presence of the instrument you were born to play and uh, that backs you up a little bit. It takes a minute to digest that. I knew that I was going to be involved in bands from that point forward. And eventually, after a, a few years of just being the singer and sometimes singer harmonica player in some bands in Philadelphia, Sweet Stave and Chain Blues Band in Philadelphia, and we opened for Cream at the Spectrum. And we played with everybody in the blues community, B.B. King, Buddy Guy, Junior Wells, the whole gang. And music, musical styles changed. And all of a sudden there was this thing called punk rock for which a Gibson Les Paul was born. Absolutely born, the quintessence, quintessential instrument for the style. And I was in hog heaven, just, I was just, I couldn't have been happier. And to this day, I, I love the instrument. It, it sounds great. It squawks when you want it to. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's God's gift to rock and roll. And I'm not just saying that because you guys are from Gibson. I mean it. Don't, don't print that. You don't want to hear. It's very not punk rock, to be honest. Only kidding.